Hi, this is Annie Grace, and welcome to this Naked Mind podcast. Earlier this week, I was asked to speak at a live event in London, the One Year No Beer One Day Live event, which was really exciting. I couldn't make it there in person. I would have loved to, but it did not it was not good timing for me. So I was actually beamed in via Skype, and it was really cool. So I got to share um, a topic that I've just done a bunch of research on, and I thought, you know, what better place to share this research that I've just done than on this podcast because it's so interesting, and especially at this time of year because we are all you know, early summer, we're thinking about bathing suit season, maybe not if you're in Australia or South Africa, but definitely in, you know, the Northern Hemisphere, we're thinking about bathing bathing suit season. Most people are thinking about losing a bit of weight. And so today I want to talk about the three main reasons why alcohol makes us fat, according to science. So first, let's start with what's not true. And I have been even a victim to this persistent myth, but there is this persistent myth that alcohol is sugar or that alcohol turns to sugar in the body. And this has been widely accepted as common knowledge, but it's actually not true. Yet, alcohol can certainly make you fat. So how exactly does this work? First of all, don't get me wrong, most alcoholic drinks contain a lot of sugar and carbohydrates. For example, one pint of cider contains almost as much sugar as the World Health Organization recommends as your daily total allowance of sugar. And additives and mixers, they're all chock full of sugar. A margarita can contain between 30 and 150 grams of sugar and around 700 calories. Some margaritas, if you go up to like the 32 ounces, I know I drank some of those in my day, there's up to 12 to 1500 calories in a single margarita. So there's certainly a sugar rush when you drink most things and a huge sugar component in drinking alcohol overall, but the alcohol itself, if you look at the label, it does not contain sugar. Now this myth originated because while alcohol is not technically sugar, if you read the nutritional label, the confusion started because some experts have said that alcohol is metabolized as sugar. And while again, that's not technically true, some aspects of truth brings us to reason number one. Alcohol, in fact, is more quickly stored as fat than even excess calories from sugar or carbohydrates or protein or in the right circumstances even than fat itself. And this is why alcohol has a high calorie content, but it's completely devoid of nutrients. In fact, aside from fat, ethanol, the macronutrient or ethanol, which is what alcohol is, is the macronutrient, which is just another word for like carbohydrates, fat, you know, anything that can tear, can, that you can like consume that contains calories. It's the macronutrient with the highest energy density. So alcohol has seven calories per gram, whereas carbohydrates, for example, have four calories per gram. And to make it worse, alcohol does not require as much time or effort for digestion, That's because it's really quickly absorbed in your bloodstream and converted into energy, and that energy is stored as fat. In fact, some of the alcohol can even be absorbed directly through the stomach lining, which is why it can affect you so quickly. But there's a compounding factor here, and that's because your body recognizes alcohol as a poison, so it actually stops digestion and processing of any other foods to process alcohol first. So that salad you ate with all the incredible nutrients will stop being digested so that your digestive system can deal with the alcohol and store the alcohol's energy as, yep, you guessed it, as fat. And the longer you drink, the more slowly you'll digest any food that you eat. And in fact, that actually brings us right to reason number two. So alcohol lowers your blood sugar. And so how does this contribute to weight gain? But first, before we get into that, I want to say that alcohol can actually contribute to really dangerously low blood sugar levels. Now, I am diagnosed hypoglycemic. That means I have really low blood sugar anyway. A lot of my mood issues, my anxiety, other things have come from such low blood sugar, and I have to work really hard to keep my blood sugar up. But this is also important to know for that reason, because low blood sugar makes us feel bad. It makes us feel uneasy, tired, restless, anxious. But also it can be dangerous and especially dangerous, you know, to diabetics who suffer from high blood sugar. But when it comes to weight gain, low blood sugar created by alcohol can lead to overconsumption of calorie rich foods. And that works like this. So without any alcohol in your system, when your blood sugar begins to dip, your liver kicks in and stores 
turns stored carbohydrates into glucose. And glucose is, of course, a form of sugar. And so your liver will send that glucose into your bloodstream in order to rebalance your blood sugar. But when you take a drink, the liver has no choice but to turn all of its attention to purging alcohol from the system as quickly as possible. And so since alcohol is poisonous to the human body and the liver will put every other process on hold, including balancing blood sugar, because it's working just to detoxify alcohol from the body. And that becomes job one above everything else. The liver says, wow, we have to get this out as quickly as possible. So this process contributes to the hunger that you feel during a bout of drinking. And your liver is focused on detoxifying alcohol so it doesn't actually process the food you're eating or the energy you've stored in your muscles in order to fuel your body. So it puts all fat loss, weight loss, processing of any other calories on hold. And you can feel hungry even after you're just eating you've just eaten and that's because of the blood sugar issue. And what this leads to, of course, is late night snacking of very high calorie foods that you would probably never even consider sober. I remember when we were at college, we would always do these 3 a.m. Taco Bell runs after a night of drinking. And when I lived in London, it was a midnight kebab. And even if you do that late night food run, here's the thing, you probably wake up ravenous the next day after having a few too many. Now, this is because the liver can be processed it can take hours for the liver to process alcohol. And that actually is protecting your body from the alcohol, trying to get rid of it as soon as possible. But during this time that the liver is processing the alcohol, your blood sugar levels will continue to drop as hunger sets in. And if your liver is still undertaking the monumental task of ridding the body of alcohol, your blood sugar can continue to drop even when you're eating foods that are high in sugar or high in carbohydrates. So in short, it's not only the alcohol itself and its empty calories, but the very process of the body ridding itself from the alcohol often leads to hunger, low mood, and a massive overconsumption of other calories. Which brings us to reason number three, which is probably actually the reason that you're most familiar with, and that's that alcohol simply lowers your inhibitions. So when you're drinking at dinner, your inhibitions are lowered, and of course, you end up ordering dessert at the end of a big meal. And your normal eating routines, they're just not as important when you're drinking. And so all those things happen. And with alcohol in the mix, you end up overeating. Your inhibitions are lowered. You throw caution to the wind and you just keep eating. Or you indulge in something you wouldn't otherwise indulge. Or you end up blacking out and you end up eating lots of stuff that you wouldn't eat otherwise. So those are really the three reasons that alcohol can make you fat. Um, and contribute to weight gain. But I wanted to spend just a little bit of time on beer specifically because beer has this added aspect of being carbonated. And our, all carbonated beverages do this. And I learned this recently. They can actually, the carbonation expands in your stomach. And even if you're feeling full and you have a carbonated beverage, the carbonation can expand, expand your stomach. And then when the carbonation quickly passes through, your stomach can be left slightly expanded and feel super empty right afterwards. So carbonated beverages can add to a feeling of hunger that beverages that aren't carbonated don't. And so that's another contributor. And there's other, you know, reasons in fact, but empty calories is really the big one. And of course the blood sugar thing is eye-opening and it's something to really be aware of, especially if you are diabetic or if you have super low blood sugar, um, hypoglycemic but no matter who you are, low blood sugar can make you feel quite bad. So anyway, it was such an honor to be invited to the event with One Year No Beer. And I just wanted to take some time on today's podcast to share this with everyone as a little extra motivation uh, for the summer months and really understanding the relationship with weight gain and alcohol. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.